Chapter 6, Retail Pricing for Profit, Part 2. And I'll talk about establishing prices. So, how can you set up the prices for the merchandise you have? There are some steps in establishing prices. First, you need to calculate a price using initial markup equations, which you learned in the previous chapter. And you need to review past sales history for similar merchandise, whether these types of products were sold well and whether there were some markdowns before so you can set up the proper, appropriate prices for the similar merchandise for the following season. And you need to consider pricing policies the retailer uses and you learn different types of pricing policies in the previous time. And some examples about these are prestige pricing, leader pricing, competitive pricing, everyday low pricing, or high low pricing. So you need to consider those because if you're having this prestige pricing and if you sell something like a really like everyday low price points, then your consumer will be confused about those, right? So you have to make sure about your pricing policies. And you need to adjust the initial price accordingly. If some of the merchandise not sold well, then you need to consider possible markdown. And if you have a promotional event, then you can think about this temporary markdown. And also, if you have some additional expenses that you didn't expect while you are getting the product, so additional expenses occur when you get the product from your vendor, then to cover these expenses, you need to adjust your initial price. And maybe you need to mark up a little bit more before you put that on the floor. And also, you need to record price in the company's computer system. So you can keep track of this all the information and also that's going to be a great information for your future record. So prices and price changes directly affect the dollar value of merchandise on hand. Of course, because it includes cost and your markup. And your sales and prices will affect your gross margin and profit. So you need to be careful when you adjust the price and when you track these price changes. And also to maintain accurate account record, you need to be careful when you process these price changes adjustment and you need to keep all the records so you can know about this or the history about those. And that's going to be important for your accounting record. So what are the price changes? It can be either decrease or the increase in price. So a decrease or an increase in price is sometimes necessary to achieve a successful merchandising operation. There are several major types of price changes used by retailer. These include markdown, markdown cancellation. When you have a temporary markdown, you have to cancel those. And you have additional markups and markup cancellation, and employee and customer discount. And these are all types of price changes. And before we talk more about details about this, let's talk about important concept, which is sell-through. We discussed this briefly before, but now let's talk about more details about this. Sell-through percent is really important to understand because that's going to tell you how well some types of merchandise is sold or not. Because this percentage of sell through will tell you that the success of the selling of merchandise. So here is the formula. Sell through percent is going to be original merchandise on hand minus current merchandise on hand divided by original merchandise on hand. That means that how much percentage of the merchandise were sold. So if you have a higher sell-through rate, that means that you are selling well about the merchandise. But if you have a low sell-through rate, that means that the product is not sold well. That time, you can consider possible markdowns and so on. And also, sell-through percent can be calculated by number of units sold divided by number of units received. And this sell-through percent expresses the rate at which an item is sold over a specified period of time. 
And again, retailer can identify the success of a selling merchandise by analyzing this sell-through report. And let me give you the example about this sell-through percent calculation. So small boutique received 25 stop belt from a popular vendor for the spring season. At the end of the season, they had five belts left on hand. What was the percent sell through of the stopped belt? And in this case, you have units. So you can calculate this by the you know, units. First of all, what you have to do, you have to calculate number of units sold. And you have your number of units received, so you can calculate the percentage of sell through based on those. Sell through percent can be calculated by original merchandise on hand minus current merchandise on hand. So how many? Original merchandise on hand was 25 and current merchandise on hand is 5. That means that you sold how many? 20. In the bottom part, the denominator is going to be original on hand. And on hand means that the merchandise you have now. So that's the retailer carry this much merchandise. And now you know how many bears were sold and you can divide it by that with the original on hand. So that is 20 divided by 25 so you will get 80%. So you can say that 80% of the belts were sold. This is pretty high. So you can say that 80% is a good you know, sell-through rate. And you can, if you have a lower number, once again, that means that the item, the type of item is not sold so well. And now let's look at the markdowns. This is the most common types of price changes. And you as a consumer also saw this a lot when you go to the store, lots of markdowns. If the products not sold well, and there are many different re reasons that retailers do the markdowns, but this is one of the most common types of price changes. And it will generate customer traffic because customers enjoy the good price. So they will come visit the store to buy this markdown merchandise. And they will increase sales because it also makes more customers to buy. And they will help acquire money to purchase new merchandise. And they will enable buyers to locate trouble spots and adjust future assortment. And the markdown is a reduction from the original or previous retail price. And you can calculate the markdown by if you know this like old and new price. And what is the purpose? What are the reasons of markdown? We already briefly talked, so maybe some product not sold well, or promotional reason, and so on. But let's look at the different types of you know, reasons of markdowns. First is to stimulate sales of slow moving or inactive stock, and it's to display or broken assortment, discontinued lines, and damaged or shop one merchandise so to get rid of those and to provide fund for the purchase of more new merchandise because you can definitely have more sales if you mark down the merchandise. And to meet the competitor's prices for the same or similar merchandise and to increase customer traffic. So now you talk about this, we talk about this like a purpose of markdown. And once again, this markdown is going to be the reduction in price. And this will lower the amount of the final markup that will be obtained. So if you have markdown, then that's going to affect your final profit. And the original retail price of one item must be large enough to cover the planned reductions and still provide the desired gross margin and maintain the markup. So that's going to be important to consider how much cost you spend and how, what are the expenses and so on. And you have to keep this gross margin and maintain the you know, markup, right? So you can consider those to a new markdown. A retailer should carefully plan for and control markdowns because of their significant impact on achieving profit.
once again, your markdown will affect your profit and gross margin. So you have to think about how you can control those and you have to set up the proper amount of the markdown to make profit. And reasons for markdown. I'll show you some errors. There are some like mistake or like problems so that there's a reason the markdown or some other reasons too. So what are the reasons of markdown? First one is gonna be buying errors. That means that you have some kind of mistake and errors happen when you buy the product. So maybe you buy certain color too many, so you want you couldn't sell that much of the color, then that's gonna be part of buying error. Then you have to mark down this product. And pricing error, you set up the price wrong, so you set up the price too high or something, so your customer don't buy, then you have to reduce the price. And selling error is something like you didn't display well, your new merchandise is displayed in the wrong place or hidden place that's gonna be the selling errors and special sale is something related to the holiday season and the timing so maybe they will go back to the regular price again but that's gonna be possible reason for markdown and special purchases this means that if your vendor gave you some special price of the product like a better prices then you can consider you know for more like markdown for that types of merchandise and also if you have broken assortments and out of season goods and you want to sell this item to buy more product and to get rid of these types of product, you need to do the markdown. And let's talk about the amount and timing of the markdown. And depending on the types of retailer, the policies governing the timing and amount of markdowns will be different. And to consider the markdown, First, markdown should be large enough to move the majority of goods. Because if you only have like a dollar markdown or something, your consumer will not notice even. And they don't think that's really like markdown. So you have to consider proper amount of the markdown, dollar markdown, to move the product. An automatic markdown policy can be applied, which is going to be if something is not sold well, it can be automatically ordered by the timing, you know. So certain after a certain timing, they can be automatically go to the reduced price. And also you can think about permanent or promotional markdown. So as we discuss, you know, something like not sold well and you want to remove this product from the floor, then you will have this permanent markdown. Promotional markdown, something like one or two days, is only for this weekend. That type of promotional markdown can happen. And this is for the holiday and so on. These will be types of promotional markdown. Or only for your lawyer customer, that's going to be also part of these you know, markdowns. And also you can think about vendor negotiation related to the markdown. And markdown money, this is something we discussed before. So markdown money can be something that you can share the loss of this markdown amount with your vendor. So your vendor kind of guarantee if something happened, they kind of like think that merchandise will be sold so well, kind of so guarantee that and they can share the loss. If that unexpected markdown happened, then they can share this markdown cost. And chargeback is going to be for the broken or returns. So you also have to think about this, you know, when you negotiate with your vendor, it can go back to your vendor. You can talk about this. And return to vendor also, this is going to be return, you know, if something not sold well, this case, then, you know, whether they accept these returns or not can be discussed or negotiated when you talk with your vendor. And jobbers, they are the third parties that purchase unsold item in bulk, and you can consider these when you negotiate. So you can kind of get the, I mean, because they're gonna resell those as a off price, but that's gonna be helpful for you. So you can think about this jobber for the first possible options. And then, how can you calculate the markdown percent? If you know the dollar price for the new and old, I mean the new price and the previous price, then you can calculate the dollar markdown. Dollar markdown can be calculated by previous price and new price. 
So your old price minus new price. And markdown percentage can be calculated by your dollar markdown divided by net sale. And markdowns are based on net sales, so you have to put, you have to remember that your denominator is going to be net sales. And net sales is going to be the price that you sold. So it's not going to be the old price, it's going to be the new sales, like a new priced merchandise sold with a discount. So you have to make sure that this is net sales. And markdown percent cannot be calculated until the merchandise is sold. Because once again, net sale can be calculated after it's sold, so you can calculate it afterward. And it's usually calculated for the certain length of time rather than on individual item. So you can, for the buying, for the retail you know, method, you need to think about this markdown percentage can be calculated after you sold the product and it can be calculated for the certain length of the time, not just for like a single item for as consumer calculated. So this is going to be more for the bigger picture. And let's look at the example. So the designer department received four dresses in style 1436. This is a style number. They retailed for $400. And all four dresses are reduced to $280 before they were sold. What was the markdown percent on this style? Based on what you learned in the previous slide, you have to calculate the dollar markdown first. And also, not just about the single item. You have to think about the all you know, merchandise and you have to think about the dollar markdown for all the merchandise. So that will be previous price minus new price and you also have to multiply with the number of dresses. So that will be 4 multiply with 400 minus 280. Because your original price, that's the old price and the new price is 280 and your old price was 400. So the difference between these two is going to be dollar markdown. And you got 480. Now you can calculate your markdown percentage. Before you do that, let's calculate your net sales. So how can you calculate your net sales? It's not given, but you can calculate it. So now you have to think about which one you have to choose to calculate the net sale. That's going to be your new price. So when you calculate your sales from this style, it's going to be 4 multiplied with the 280. So you got this 1,120. And now you can calculate markdown percentage. So that will be dollar markdown divided by your net sale. So 480 divided by 1,120. So it's going to be 42.86%. So make sure that your bottom part, your denominator is going to be the net sale. So not the old price, but that's going to be with the new price actual sales. And this example gives you the idea of how you can calculate the markdown as a buyer, as a retailer, not as a consumer. Also, this is not just for the single item. Maybe you have to do it sometimes, but oftentimes when you calculate the markdown, it's pretty much for the, the big amount of the merchandise. So that's it for today. I mean, for this lecture video and I'll continue to talk about price changes the next time. So I'll see you the next time.